Hey there, Lynn Curry here. So last time we, uh, we checked in, I had a list from the private inspection. We had our guys come in and take care of that list. They knocked it out in a couple days. It was a, a pretty short list. Um, they finished that. We brought in the city inspector who passed us. He had a couple addition, additional things that he wanted us to take care of, but basically gave us what's called a partial, which means that uh, we could proceed work and he's going to check those things when he comes back for the next inspection. So what we were able to do is bring the guys back in to correct those other minor things, and then we went ahead and insulated. So at this point, we've got insulation throughout the house. We chose to do spray foam insulation in the walls and in the ceiling, or in the, the roof deck is what it's, what it's actually called because it's right along the roof line. At the roof line, we get about seven inches of insulation because we've got two by eights up there, and that gives us an R25, which is really fantastic for a climate like what we have in Austin, Texas, where we can sometimes go three months on end in the summer over 100 degrees. Um, getting these houses insulated saves so much money on the back end for the new homeowners. On the walls though, what we do is we get an R15 because in this particular house, we've got two by four walls, so we only have three and a half inches of foam. So with three and a half inches of foam, it drops our R value down. Still though, most of your energy is lost through your roof deck, so that R25 at the roof deck is amazing and it makes homeowners really happy. Um, one of the things you need to do when you're planning to do insulation like this is have your HVAC sized right. If you have too powerful of an air conditioning unit in here, it'll cycle on and off constantly. And that, that cycling on and off is what uses the bulk of the energy. So your bills will still be fairly high if you don't have it sized high enough. Um, for some people that seems counterproductive. They think, you know, for any house in the state of Texas, in central Texas, you want the biggest AC unit possible. But that doesn't really hold true. It's got to be sized correctly for how you've insulated the house, how you size the house, and what you're trying to do, or else you're, you're losing efficiencies there. The other thing we do in these houses is put in insulation for sound attenuation. Uh, and we don't use spray foam for that. We use what are called bats. Um, in this house, we've got three levels, so two floors above the ground floor. And so what we do is we put bats right up underneath the flooring on both of those. Uh, we're gonna have hardwood floors and what we want to do is make it so that when you are underneath one of those hardwood floors, you don't constantly hear the clicking and people walking on them. Of course, you know, they're not, it's not perfect. If somebody drops something really loud, you'll still hear it, but it keeps that hollow clicking from happening throughout the house. We also put insulation between the wet areas. So the showers, the master bedroom and any other, the other rooms that we've got just again to make it so that sound doesn't go through those walls. While sheetrock over two by fours does a little bit of sound reduction, it really does not keep it silent. So these things help make a house feel a little more solid, quiet. You've got some quiet spaces. Um, it's just a nice add on. Now, if you're doing a really inexpensive house and really watching your budget, you probably don't want to do some of the things that we've done insulation wise, but I'm building fairly high end homes. So my buyers expect these types of things. At the house next door that you've, you've seen some of the work done on for the pool, we've got a couple things going on. We're framing up that foundation. So we'll be uh, getting that poured in the next week or two. Um, and then we've also got the pool guys back in, the pool crews back in, and they're creating a, a plywood structure inside the pool that we've done the shotcrete on where we're gonna cover the pool. Like I mentioned this in another one of the videos, we wanna be sure that none of the, no trash is put in the pool, water doesn't get into the pool because if the water gets in the pool, it'll then get in the pipes and we'll have a lot of mosquitoes on site, which are no fun in Central Texas in the summertime. And um, it'll just keep it a really clean, protected area while the rest of the house is being built. Um, once the house next door is done, what we'll do is come and uncover it and finish out the pool. So if you want to continue to follow along with the build of this house, you can follow me at lynncurrybuilds.com.